Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 179 on the Mandalik. I'm John as always, and it's here. We finally got a different set. It's Ravnica Allegiance. We're going to open this pack, see what's in it, and we're going to talk about what we would take pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Now, quick reminder, all Crack Pack Tuesdays are sponsored. If you are a patron at the $5 level or above over at patreon.com slash you get a chance each week to get all the cards in this pack. Or if you don't want them, none. Or if you just want the rare, just the rare. If you want the rare and a weird common, you can get that too. So go on over to patreon.com slash if you do want to get into that. This week, it's going to Evan Reed. So let's see what we got for pack one, pick one here. Now, I've drafted this set two times, I think. Uh, I'm going to dive in officially tomorrow on stream with Arena Best of Threes. And then, of course, Spiky Saturdays. But up first, we have Humungulus. Humungulus is four and a blue for a creature homunculus. A humungus homunculus. It's a 2-5 with hexproof. That's about it. There's not... A lot of ways to put counters on this. Yes, if you have a Simic Ascendancy, it would be kind of dumb. There's no real auras. There's just Sentinel's Mark. This is just not that exciting. Um, I might side it in if I find that, that I'm against ground aggro that isn't too big. Uh, of course, if you just want to waste time, Gruel is still going to just run through this guy. Uh, not a huge pick, not high at all, and I think you actually cut it quite a bit. Up next is Gravelhide Goblin. Gravelhide Goblin is one and a red for a creature Goblin Shaman. It's a 2-1. You can pay three and a green to give it plus two, plus two until end of turn. This is Fine Filler. If you're in Gruel, it's probably slightly better than Fine Filler. You'd probably generally put the first one in your deck. If you are in uh, just uh, the other guild, the other red guild, red, black, Rakdos, then you would uh, put this in as Filler if you needed it. A very 23rd card, but nowhere near a first pick. Up next is Viscopa Vampire. Viscopa Vampire is two and a white or two and a black. Your choice for a creature vampire. It's a three one with lifelink. Totally fine filler. Goes in uh, all white decks, all black decks as a 20, probably 23rd card. It's probably one of your last includes. Um, if you do want some early ground aggro, it's going to help out. Uh, if you want a creature that's just going to block and eat something, trade something, it's totally fine as well, but it's nowhere near a first pick. Up next is Axbane Beast. Axbane Beast is three and a green for a creature beast. It's a three four with vanilla text, and that's that's it. Uh, vanilla text, flavor text. Uh, it's it's okay. It's absolutely okay. You will put this in a uh, gruel deck, and it's going to be fine. It's going to feel a little bit bad that it doesn't have riot, but it's totally fine filler. Uh, just nowhere near a first pick. Very mid pack. Up next is Rakdos Trumpeter. Rakdos Trumpeter is one and a black for a creature human shaman. It's a 1-3. It's got Menace, and you can pay three and a red to give it plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. If you're in a low curve aggro deck, this is okay. It's still only going to deal one damage because you want to be spending your mana on playing creatures and playing removal. By the time this becomes good, the game should be basically over. And, and this can help you finish a game, so it's not the worst thing in the world. It does enable Spectacle, but you really should not be upgrading cards' values because they enable Spectacle. I've talked about this a little bit, but you're not going to get that much Spectacle. There just isn't that much at Common and Uncommon. And all you have to do is enable it once per card per game. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that a card is really good at reliably enabling Spectacle because you don't have to reliably enable Spectacle. So don't upgrade it for that. It's just fine filler in an aggro deck, but there are plenty of other cards I'd prefer. Never a first pick. Up next is Orzhov Locket. Orzhov Locket is three generic mana for an artifact. Tap it to add a white or a black. Pay Orzhov, 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 Orzhov. Tap it and sack it to draw two cards. No, I, I don't like the Lockets for draft. I didn't like them last set. I don't like them this set. They're slightly more playable in sealed, but I still don't really care for them there. I just, I, I don't want a Locket. Never a first pick. Well, a potential first pick is Frenzied Erinx. Frenzied Erinx is two red-green for a creature cat beast. It's a 3-3 with Riot. It's got Trample, and you can pay four red-green to give it plus three, plus O oh until end of turn. This thing is a beast. A cat beast. 3-3 three, three, Haste Trample can be relatively scary. A 4-4 four, four, Trample is very scary, and the fact that it can be a 7-4 Trample or a 6-4 Trample if you do give it Haste is very very frightening. You're never really going to ever double enable this, but the uh, the single enable really messes up combat math. It can really just end a game if your opponent doesn't have many blockers or if they're Orzhov and chumping with 1-1 spirits or whatnot and getting through for 6 trample is huge. This thing is super, super good. I would 
I think happily first pick it. I wouldn't ecstatically first pick it, but I would happily first pick it. And from what we've seen so far, it is going to be the first pick for right now. Up next is our second locket. Feeling like Dragon's May is getting this many lockets in a pack. Three generic mana for a gruel locket artifact. Tap it to add a red or a green. Pay four gruel. Sack it, tap it, and draw two cards. Everything I said about Orzhov locket except gruel even more desperately wants to be using its mana on creatures, not on trash. Not a first pick. Up next is Wrecking Beast. Wrecking Beast is five green green for a six six creature beast with Riot and Trample. This is better in Sealed. You might have had some success with this in Sealed over the pre-release weekend. You're not going to have as much success with it in Draft. Draft is much faster. Even in this set, which can be slow, it's faster than Sealed and it's especially faster than pre-release Sealed. So I don't think I typically want to be playing Wrecking Beast. I need to have some ramp. I need to be in Simic, I need to have the Gyre Engineer, I need to have the Rare Druid, I need to know that I'm going to hit 7. And if I am, then this is okay, but that's not very common, and you're going to know that way late in pack, maybe even 2 if not 3, so never a first pick. Our final common, that's 10 common, so no foil, unfortunately, this time, is Senate Courier. Senate Courier is two and a blue for a creature bird. It's a one four with flying. Pay one and a white. Senate Courier gains vigilance until end of turn. This thing's fine. This thing's super fine. Three mana for five power and toughness. Flying, that's not super common. You don't typically get that. This blocks everything for a while. Uh, it devours spirits. It absolutely shuts down an Orzhov deck. And uh, if you happen to have high alert, this thing attacks like a 4-4. I actually really like Senate Courier. I don't think I'd ever first pick it over a Frenzied Erinx, but I think if this pack continued to be awful, let's hope the uncommons and the rare aren't awful, but if this con pack continued to be this bad and didn't have the Erinx in it, I think this is actually my first pick now, but it doesn't really compare to the Erinx, so it's not going to stay in frame. Our first uncommon is Archway Angel. Archway Angel is five and a white for a creature angel. It's a three, four with flying, and when it ETBs, you gain two life for each gate you control. I haven't seen the gate deck go off yet. I've heard a lot of hype about it. I hear a lot of hype about every deck that's kind of weird. So we'll see if it actually works out, if it's actually consistent, but this is definitely going to be something that stars in it. It is six mana for a three, four flyer, which is a bit overcosted, but it is going to gain you that life that you lost by doing nothing, by just screwing around and playing gates and having fun and just getting hit in the face by Rakdos and Gruul and Spirits and everything else. So it's going to help you get back into the game. So I definitely see this as being a key part of that gate deck. But until I see that gate deck happen or get my own experience with it, I'm going to remain a little bit skeptical. But this is probably in the conversation for first pick here, and you'll have to let me know as well. So I'm going to keep this in the frame for now. Up next is Silhana Wayfinder. Silhana Wayfinder is one and a green for a creature elf scout. It's a 2-1. When it ETBs, you don't scry four. People say this is scry four. You look at the top four cards of your library and you reveal a creature or a land card from among them, put it on top of the library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. It's okay. It's a 2-1 for two, which means it can be relatively aggressive if you do get it down on turn one in both green decks. And it does help you fix your curve or fix your uh, land. So this probably isn't as awful as I originally thought. Going on top of the library still feels really bad, but I think this is fine. I don't think I'd ever first pick it, but I think it's fine. Uh, our last on common is Dovin's Acuity. Dovin's Acuity is one white blue for an enchantment. When it ETBs, you draw a card and gain two life. Whenever you cast an instant spell during your main phase, Dovin's Acuity uh, is returned to your hand. Um, I, I've seen hype for this. I've seen people get very excited about it. I still don't know if it actually is that good. Um, I'm going to have to try to play with it. Casting instants in your main phase just doesn't feel great. Even with addendum, the bonuses aren't that amazing, and you're typically only doing it when you don't have anything else to do. You know, Sphinx's insight in your main phase to get that two extra life, you never do that when you have a counter spell in your hand or when you have some sort of activated ability that you're waiting to do. You do that when you literally don't have a choice, when there's nothing else to do. And it's often okay, it's often fine. And if it gains me four life, technically by replaying this card eventually, then that's probably okay. So I've got to see Dovin's Acuity go uh, in practice. I don't think it's a first pick, but I don't have experience with it yet either. So it's a card that I'm definitely going to keep my eye on. Our rare is Absorb. 
absorb is white, blue, blue for an instant at rare counter target spell. You gain three life. Absolutely not. It's a hard to cast cancel, not even remotely interested in that. I don't play cancel in draft. I don't play hard to cast cancel in draft. If the upside is that I gain three life, no interest in absorb. You keep this in your sideboard you probably just don't play it. Um, it's not, it's not the rare that you want to see. So no absorb here for sure. And we get a, a Simic Guild Gate, which will not be our first pick either. So I think our first pick here is really between the Angel and the Erynx. Maybe Dovin's Acuity, but again, I don't have the experience with it, so I'm not sold. Looking at the other cards, Senate Courier is not really going to get put into the conversation. Um, Silhana Wayfinder, I don't think will, will either. So I think this early in the draft, I probably would take the Archway Angel, the Archway Angel, and see if I could pull off that gate deck to see what it's like. Um, maybe I would take Dovin's Acuity to see what that's like, but I don't think it's actually going to be in this conversation. And Frenzied Erynx, I think, is the safe pick. Gruul is fine, and this is a fantastic common for the Gruul deck. So let me know what you would have taken in the comments down below. Would you have taken the Angel? Do you have experience with gate deck? Let me know. Would you have taken the Erynx? Would you have taken Dovin's Acuity? Would you have taken the Absorb? I don't recommend it. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manaleek. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me at Facebook.com slash Manaleek, Patreon.com slash Manaleek. And I missed one, Twitch.tv slash Manaleek. Yes, where I'll be streaming tomorrow, drafting uh, a whole bunch of or maybe one, we'll see how much time I have, uh, Ravnica Allegiance drafts. If you do want to head over to inkedgaming.com and get yourself a playmat like this one, you can uh, go on over there and use the promo code MANALEAK10, all one word, one zero as the number, to save 10% off your order and to help out the channel. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button, click subscribe if you want to see more, and if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.